Good evening, my dear friends. I am here to give you the remainder of revelations that I haven't given you the previous two or three nights. <clears throat> I think I got everything set up here pretty good, so I'm going to be reading from the Bible on an app on my computer tonight instead of holding a real Bible. And I think I've never done that before, but I think I can do it without any problem. So <clears throat> let me get my voice clear. <clears throat> my sign of strain is just bad, and I apologize. Oh, and I had to turn on the air conditioner after the last video. It got pretty warm in here. I still forgot to check the thermometer, but it got warm enough. I turned the air conditioner on, so it's feeling good in here now. All right, we are doing Revelation 18 through the end of Re Revelation, which is 22 chapters. And in the last video, I said I was going to give you more commentary than I did in the previous videos on Revelation, but I probably am not. I've read it twice, these four chapters, <clears throat> these five chapters since I did the last video and there is some commentary I'll give you but not a lot and I pray that you will ask the Holy Spirit to do the commentating for you to do the interpreting and translating and everything for you that's what I do and he can do a whole lot better job of it than me friend I asked him to guide me every time I open the Bible, whether it's online or a, a real Bible that I hold in my hand. <coughs> <coughs> and my drainage is really messing with my voice. But I think y'all can understand me, and I'll try to speak loud. All right, chapter 18 of Revelation, starting at verse 1. After these things... I saw another angel come down from heaven, and after these things, they're referring to the fall of the mystery Babylon in chapter 17, and I don't know, but me and a whole lot of other people thinks mystery Babylon is America, but I don't know. All right, after these things, the, the, the fall of mystery Babylon, I saw another angel coming down from heaven having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. And here, Babylon the great is a different Babylon than... Uh, the mystery Babylon so we're talking about a different thing different situation here now for all the nations have drunk the wine of wrath of her fornication the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury the mystery Babylon was taken down destroyed by the kings of the earth and we see that happening right now. It's in progress right now. The Babylon the Great will be taken down by God. All right, continuing on, we're in verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you, and repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow for she says in her heart I sit as queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow 
Therefore, her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. Standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise any more. Merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon and incense, fragrant oil and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies and souls of men. The fruit that your soul long for has gone from you, and all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you, and you shall find them no more at all. The merchants of these things who came rich who became rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment weeping and wailing and saying alas alas the great city that was clothed in fine linen purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls for in one hour such great riches came to nothing every shipmaster all who have traveled by ship sailors and as many as trade on the sea stood at a distance and cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning saying what is like this great city they threw dust on their heads and heads and cried out weeping and wailing and saying alas alas that great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth for in one hour she is made desolate Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found any more. The sound of harpists, musicians, Flutists and trumpeters shall not be heard in you any more. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you any more, and the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you any more. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you any more, and the voice of the bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you any more. For your merchants were the great men of the earth, for by your sorcery, all the nations were deceived and in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and of all who were slain on the earth chapter 19 after these things i heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying hallelujah salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God, for true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Again they said, Hallelujah, her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. Then a voice from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. 
as I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and the sound of many waters, and the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice, give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. That's us. We're the bride of Christ, of the Lamb. And we've had seven years to get ready. And it was granted to be, ar and, and to her, it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was, clo he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his present presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Those two were cast alive into the lake of burning a fire burning with brimstone and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse and all the birds were filled with their flesh and the parts of Revelation I'm reading you tonight 18 through 22 or 18 and 19 and maybe 20 was the great the part of the great tribulation we, earlier we had the uh, first three and a half years of tribulation, but the great tribulation started at the midway point, 42 months into the 84 months of tribulation. So we're talking about everything that's going on in the great tribulation era now. And I gotta get another drink. And now we scoot over to chapter 20. 
Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should not deceive the nations no more till a thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And that I do not understand. The Holy Spirit has not revealed that to me. If any of you understand it, share and let me know. Why would they put uh, Satan in hell and lock him away, but only for a thousand years? And it says, and uh, then after those things, he must be re released for a little while. Why must he be released? That's something I don't understand. But anyway, let me continue on here. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads, are on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. That's the millennial reign of Christ here on earth. We'll talk more about that shortly here. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection, over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to them, to gather them together to battle whose number is as of the sand of the sea. Maybe the reason he was locked up and let out a thousand years later was so God could deal with him once and for all and God would get the glory. I don't know. You know, i got to pray and thank and seek the Holy Spirit for that some more. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and a false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades de delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one, according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And you know, I have been telling y'all that God came, Jesus came the first time as Savior to redeem us from our sins. He's coming back the second time as judge 
to judge everyone, and that's what they're talking about here. He coming back as judge now. All right, and now we hop on over to chapter 21. Now, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. So the earth as we know it today is gone now in chapter 21. But a new heaven and a new earth created by God is descending from heaven down to where earth used to be. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. All the mess that we have experienced in our life is gone forever. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in a lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls, Filled with seven, filled with the seven last plagues, came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. She Also she had a great and high wall with twelve gates and twelve angels at the gates and names written on them, which were the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. Now the wall of the city had twelve foundations and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. The city is laid out as a square, its length is as great as its breadth, and he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs, its length, breadth, and height are equal. Then he measured its wall 144 cubits according to the measure of man that is of an angel the construction of its wall was of jasper and the city was pure gold like clear glass the foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones the first foundation was jasper the second sapphire the third Chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth 
amethyst. The 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each individual gate was of one pearl, and the streets of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God illum illuminated it. The Lamb is its light, and the nations of whose of those who were saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation chapter 22. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was a tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each true each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord gives them that light and they shall reign forever and ever. Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Shortly take place. That means soon. Behold, and this is Jesus speaking, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things, and when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant, and of your brethren the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book, worship God. And he said to me, Do not steal the words of prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Do not seal the words of the prophecy. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may, may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts come. Whosoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book of this prophecy, 
God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. So don't take to this book, don't add from this book. He who testifies to these things say, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And amen from me too. God bless you, friends.